Okay. So I'm going to be going over Halloween. Uh, Halloween 1978. So the main point of this film, I think, is very clearly to kind of scare the audience. Um, it's not really a film that's built very strongly on narrative. It's not a film that has very kind of dynamic or super engaging characters. They're interesting in their own way, but they don't really develop in a way that people would in like a drama or even like a comedy to some extent. I think it is very clearly aimed at having a linear narrative where you know exactly what's happening and is trying to build suspense, it is trying to scare you, and it is trying to disturb you in some ways, right? And I think it is pretty effective at that. So the class concept I probably want to focus on is maybe the establishing shot. I think the establishing shot is very iconic in Halloween. I think the fact that they use just a pumpkin and then the very effective soundtrack of this film to kind of build suspense and draw you in and then if we want to include the uh i guess intro the actual establishing shot of the young michael myers killing his sister like it's a very unique opening you know it has pov shots it has um again the use of this music it features a child as the killer which is something that's very new and it really is extremely unique. It's uh, it's something that you just don't really see even in films to this day, and especially at the time, it was very innovative and very interesting, right? Oh, in terms of the aesthetic of the film, I think I will probably have to emphasize the music. Um, I think the score for this film and a lot of John Carpenter's films is really amazing. I think it creates a kind of thematic tension where there is the piano, there's the organ, and there's some kind of horns throughout, but basically, but only using very basic elements to build very serious suspense. And I think the fact that it pervades all throughout the film in a very consistent way is really emblematic of Michael Myers appearing all throughout the film in a very consistent way. I think only on a rewatch, because I have seen this film before, did I realize that Michael Myers is truly in like every scene, really. <laughs> like he is either in the car, he is physically showing himself, he is being thought of, like he exists in some capacity all throughout the film. You never get a moment away from him. You never get safety from him. Even in the earlier scenes of the movie where it's day outside, like that's just building tension and building towards the fact that he's going to kill people later. He is not escapable. Um, and I think that gets into kind of why I do think the film is well constructed. Again, it's weird that this film doesn't really have much character, doesn't really have much narrative, but I think what it does have is just kind of this very interesting way of keeping the viewer engaged in the horror and i think that's what really engages with the audience because again michael myers is everywhere um, and michael myers is a human but he's not exactly human either because he's never really tried to be humanized all throughout the film like the doctor just says he's straight up evil um you never question why he kills who he kills you never question kind of what he's doing and why he's doing it. He just is like emblematic of a true sense of evil. Like he is just a bad person. He is crazy, he's insane. Um, and he's something to be afraid of, you know, because no matter what obstacle gets in his way, he'll break through it. No matter what happens throughout this film, um, he gets shot like six times in the end. Like he's alive, he's fine. Um, because he, he's human, but he's not, you know? And I think that's what builds a really good kind of fear factor because most movies either go way farther down the psychological route like this is a very demented person and they get into their into the why they get into what what's wrong with them they get into their motivations but michael myers doesn't really have any motivations he's just kind of an evil person um and i think that works well because usually when we see something like that it's just like oh this person is an alien or oh this person is um some sort of monster like they have a reason to be evil but he is just a person so it really makes you wonder what is he thinking why is he doing these things? And then the scary part is that there is no answer. The scary part is that he's just this unavoidable being, this shape that is coming at you and there's nothing you can do about it. So what do I like about this film? Hmm. I guess I would say I do like the use of lighting and kind of a lot of the aesthetic elements. I think it's a very unique film and how it does all that. And I really like the score. I think again, the fact that this is such a linear film works really well for it because everything is very comprehensive and especially knowing John Carpenter later made The Thing, he can write very complex characters and he can write very complex horror stories, but he chose to really dumb it down to kind of just embrace the fear factor and embrace the simplicity of what horror and suspense can be. So I think making Michael Myers into this very kind of abstract, just monster, the shape that is uh, chasing these people and then murdering these people in very interesting ways, um, I think works really well. So. I think this film does hold up in a lot of ways. Um, I think if you question the characters, it starts to be a little bit worse, but I think if you kind of buy into the fact that Michael Myers is just evil, these characters just can't do anything against it, it works really well, and um, it's one of the most effective horror movies out there. So, yeah.